in this super awesome Christmas episode of Mind Pump. Merry Christmas, everybody. We do a year of review. We look back at 2019 and we talk about all the awesome things that happened for us in 2019. We talk it was about a great year, Sal. Adam becoming a father. That was the biggest thing that happened. That was really awesome. Talked about some of our live events and how they impacted us. Talk about the time Justin went up in an F-16 and got his brains scrambled. It was insane. We talked about Adam's trip to Organifi, uh, how I was going around training trainers. And then we talked about our top 10 favorite interviews of the entire year. This is a great reference episode. If you're trying to figure out which interviews you should listen to, listen to this episode because we break down our top 10 most impactful, important podcast interviews that we did in the year 2019. Also, I want to remind everybody, this month, and it is ending soon because we are towards the end of the month, MAPS Aesthetic is 50% off. Now, MAPS Aesthetic is a full workout program. It's got workout videos, workout blueprints. It's designed to help you improve your aesthetics, build and sculpt your body. Now, here's how you get the 50% off discount before it ends. Go to mapsblack.com and use the code BLACK50. That's B-L-A-C-K-5-0, no space for the discount. That was a really sweet yeah, post oh. you did last night, by the way. You got oh, yeah, me, that you, was very You got high. me yeah. all emotional. I no, I didn't. Did I really? You, you yeah. did. You I meant it. Yeah, that was I meant a, it. Well, I, you know, I, yeah, think, I responded and then it didn't post. And so I was like, oh, whoops. <laughs> <laughs> so you never posted it. I, I did it this morning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what an asshole. Hello. No, it was. Uh, I think everybody was kind of in that 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 feeling you know, coming to the end of the year, and uh, you know, talking about the things that we we have done uh, within the business, outside the business. Uh, I think we've all been in this place of gratitude, yeah. which makes for I think a really uh, cool time to talk about our our review of 2019, our annual review of mm-hmm. the episodes that we've done, and recap of the business on things that have happened in and outside of the business. Uh, But most importantly, to go over the, you know, we had 50 guests this year. Um, We cranked them in a bit this year. Well, not, I I don't, I think the year before we actually even had more, but the quality of guests. Yeah. Every, almost every guest was phenomenal. There were a few there that were like, well, most of them, the vast majority were exceptional. Yeah. And so this year is going to be a little more challenging. I feel like to narrow it down, narrow down to our, our top 10, um, because they were. I mean, everybody really was. As I'm looking at the list right now, I'm like, man, th- those were a lot of really cool interviews. Yeah. It's crazy since I've met you guys. And the reason why I did that post is I was sitting back and thinking about the, just the past year and how much growth I've gone through personally <clears throat> and really realizing that since I've met the, the three of you, um, I've grown more in the – you know, almost five years I've known you guys than I did in the previous 35 years. I yeah. mean, such a fast, rapid rate of personal growth. And it's because I'm with people who I trust, uh, who are honest, who are good. It's really hard to find really, really true, true good people, mm-hmm. self-aware. Um, and, and, you know, just to hang out with you guys, it requires me to, to, to be that way myself. Um, so it's been it's been awesome, and this year has been a very transformative year, I think, in a lot of different ways. Um, one of the biggest things that happened in 2019 that I thought was amazing was uh, Adam became a father. Mm. Yeah, Adam, that had to be the biggest. Uh, that is the biggest thing, man. When I, when I first met you, you were uh, you would you know kind of lean towards the side of not even wanting kids. It was a lot mm. of a lot of the ways you talked about that were like I don't I don't even think I want them and. And um, now, getting to know you, um, I knew you were not put on this earth to not be a father, for sure. Once I once I got to, after about 30 seconds of getting to know you, I was like, oh, this guy was made to be a dad. Yeah. And um, and so I, I knew that that was something that, that had to happen. And now look at you. You're a dad. Yeah, no, I, you know, I was just listening to uh, an interview that somebody did of me last week, and we talked about uh, Maximus. And one of the questions they asked me about was, you know, you and Katrina were together for eight years before you had a kid. Yeah. They're like, what What took you so long or what was the deal? You know, I said, ah, you know, a lot of people thought it was like a, a, a commitment issue thing for me that um, that really didn't know me. If you really know me, you, you kind of know uh, my, my childhood background and, and a lot of my motivation, uh, where that came from. And 
I didn't want to bring a child in this world because of a lot of my own insecurities uh, of, you know, having fear of, you know, I don't, I don't want to stress uh, over money when I, when I have a child or bring a child in this world. If, if my, uh, you know, if my wife wants to stay home and be with our son, I want to be in a place that I can support the family. Okay. If we decide that we want to put him in private school, I want to be able to do that. I want to be able to take him places and travel. And so there was a lot of things that kept me from wanting to have a, a son right now. And when I, as I started to get old I, in, in, in any time in the last 30 something years, and as I got older, I started to realize, wow, there might be a possibility that I, I, I may not become a father. Who knows? Um, and it was crazy the way it all worked out for Katrina and I, because when we first started uh, trying to have a kid, honestly, there was a part of me that I didn't want to get pregnant yet. Mm -hmm. I didn't want her to get pregnant yet because we, we weren't quite there in mind pump yet where I felt comfortable uh, that, okay, we're here to stay. You know, it, truth be told, as, as, as confident as we've all been since day one, you know, I, there was a, I was waiting for a place for this business to be for me to feel like, okay, I feel like I can, we're not going to, mind pump's not going to stop in the next three to five years, no matter what, right? Sure. Like we've built a, a, a foundation now where I feel confident in that. So, yeah, the way it all unfolded uh, was really uh, amazing. It, it was awesome to watch. Now, did did working with and being around three uh, fathers help or impact you in any different way? I don't think so. I think what you guys have provided along those lines is, uh, I mean, it it makes me excited to have um, you know three other men that I respect a ton. Uh, in that area as far as I respect you guys for a lot of reasons, but uh, you, you're all exceptional fathers for all different reasons too. That's what's really unique. You know, Doug's got an incredible story uh, as far as him being a father. Justin uh, is unique with his two boys and then you with your son and daughter and then going through a divorce. And with the, I mean, you guys have all taught me so many things uh, in different ways and have been great examples of how to be a great man and a great father. So, but I don't think that's motivated me more or less to have a child. It's always been mm. the, the the money thing and, and security and, and that. That's big, the big thing. It's always yeah. been the big thing uh, for me. And and even like Katrina, I knew, you know, after a couple of years of being with her, I knew I was going to be with her for the rest of my life. So it wasn't even a question of, is she the one? It was really more about where I was at or where we were at currently in our, our you know, journey on if it was going to work out mm. timing. And, I, and what I love about her is we both, uh, we're always that way with it. It was, uh, you know, if it happens uh, and, and it happens in the time frame that she still wants to have a child, because for her, it was kind of a cutoff. Like, hey, I don't want to be having a kid at 40. Like, that's too late for me. So if it doesn't, if it doesn't fall in line with where you're at in your life, and uh, then we had, and that was a big pivotal point in our relationship, you know, about two and a half years ago or three years ago now, her and I had probably one of the hardest times in our relationship when she was getting closer to that kind of cutoff of when she decided I'm not going to have a kid after that. And I was still at a place where I'm like, uh, I'm not quite ready to have a kid yet. Um, and we, we really struggle with that. And I know there was a lot of outside pressure from family and friends around that time. And I think that added to it. Uh, but we did. We finally had we had this talk, and it was an incredibly reassuring moment for me in our relationship. When she said, "You know, I I, I pictured my life uh, without you and with a, another man and and a family and what that would look like, and then I, I pictured what life could be like with you if we never had kids." And uh, I'm quite confident that I don't. I I would rather not have a kid and be with you for the rest of my life than to pursue a relationship with anybody else and have a child and a family. And for me, that was all I needed to hear to feel good about uh, us and going forward. And then, like I said, uh, it all just kind of happened, yeah. man, the way it unfolded timing-wise. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. That was that was one of the highlights, for sure, of uh, 2019. Um, some other highlights were some of the, the live events that we did yeah. uh, throughout the year. Um, in, for me in particular, was the, the we did a dinner – with some of the guests <clears throat> that attended uh, one of our live events. And uh, we got to meet people up close, hang out with them. That's why we had this dinner. So we only had, I think it was five or six people that uh, were there as part of uh, the dinner that were, you know, because when we have these events, there's 100, 250 people. We only had five people at this dinner. Um, but so I got to meet people and really talk about, talk to them and hear their story. 
And, you know, there was uh, one couple that sat next to me where the, the guy was really struggling. He had lost a lot of weight. And he was really struggling with, you know, continuing to move forward. And I gave him some advice. I told him to put his scale in the closet, told him to bump up his calories, build muscle, you know, the, the typical things we talk about. And I got an email from him a few months later and uh, the, his body progressed. He, he doesn't, he feels far more comfortable with what he's doing and he's much, is a better ease. And it was so nice to be able to make that impact mm-hmm. in person and to hear from people. Um, that was a big one for me. Did for you guys sure. have a favorite live event out of all of them? I mean, one of the things I think we all agree on is that uh, though every time we do one, even if it's begrudgingly because we're so busy with everything else in the business, it's like, oh God, we got to go out and do this. Every time we go, we go, fuck, man, these these things impact each of us individually uh, so much and remind us of why we are putting... Uh, They're very impactful. Yeah, and so impactful. we end up loving them always. Did do we you, do Denver this year? Yeah. yeah, we did. That was my we favorite. We did Denver. Uh, it wasn't Manhattan Beach. What was the one down in LA, the other location there? But it was real it was close Man- by. It was Manhattan Beach. Was, was that, it? Wasn't that Doug? Uh, yeah, Manhattan Beach. Yeah, so that was my other favorite. I That's think, my favorite too. Yeah, I just think that uh, the energy, the crowd, like we just had a lot of fun at that event. We were and, we were on on that one. Yeah. I feel like yeah, of all on all the alive events, uh, you know, I, I have critiques of you know either myself or us collectively when we when we come back, and I felt we were. Uh, the best at that event. Yeah. Well, and I think too, the format of it was very much more of like, you know, what do you guys want this to be? Because you guys are leading the questions and then we're kind of responding accordingly. And so sometimes, you know, the conversations got deep and, and, you know, it was powerful to hear people's story of how, you know, they're able to turn things around, how we've been able to like impact them on some way that we didn't even know. Uh, and man, that, that was always humbling. That's always a humbling experience to be a part of somebody's journey, uh, to find their way back to, to health and wellness and just, you know, how that impacts their family and then how that, you know, propels them forward in their life somehow. Like, yeah, that that's what's like the most uh, I get out of those those live events is just to hear people's stories of you know how they they've either found us how they've either applied what we've taught them um, you know how they they all interact with each other find each other and then create more community uh, from you know what we talk about on the show it's pretty awesome. incredible I like San Francisco a lot but for selfish reasons that was the first one that I had your uh, family. family at I that's had a right. lot of family there too. That was a fun one. A bunch of cousins and, you know, my brother was there and they got to see us in our element. And, um, you know, I felt so proud, right? Because you, you want to do well. In of front course, of you had like you. your own little laughing meter over there. You know what I'm saying? Laughing crowd over there. <laughs> Every time Sal's joke, was like extra loud laughs yeah. out there. <laughs> oh my God, that's so funny. <laughs> I, I, they're going to come to every live event from now on. I'm going to pay for them to come. All right. <laughs> so that was, that was a lot of fun. And we had this year uh, the best guests that we've had ever, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, part of it's the size of the show. It allows us to draw... Uh, bet you know guests that have more power or clout. So you know when we were smaller, it might have yeah. been difficult to get well, some of these people on the show. But before we get into that, I also wanted to mention like uh, going up to Travis Air Force Base. Oh and, yeah, and, and just getting the the once in a lifetime opportunity to fly with the Air Force Thunderbirds was just the most incredible experience I've ever had. God, that, that was this I'm year. So thankful what, for that. It was what, crazy. What, what month was that? Do you remember what month that was? No. It was like early in the year, February yeah. or March. I would yeah, it was it, pretty early. Like yeah. What I remember about that is he's, Justin came back the next day and I'm like, how was it? And he goes, it, it was like every single cell exploded in my body. <laughs> it's like the inside of me got strong. And I said, bro, I said, will you ever do it again? He goes, no. He goes, I loved it, but I'll never do it again. It was a crazy experience. Yeah. I've had enough time to where now it just seems like the most amazing thing I ever did. Right. You know, <laughs> even though it was very challenging, but it's just like, I think for me, it was the impact of. Uh, the ritual, the formalities, like the just the welcoming environment that they provided. Uh, Doug was able to come up with me and got to see a, a lot of like the, you know, the formalities involved with it. And just I, I had so much respect and admiration uh, for people in the service. And it brought brought that back uh, in me because, you know, you just realize uh, what everybody else is doing out there to, uh, it, it, to that we're benefiting from. Whatever happened to the video of you? And the, didn't they send you a video? Mm-hmm. Why didn't you show us? 
I did. What you are you did? talking about? Did yeah. you share it with I us? I posted that on my oh, Instagram, I got to watch it. Yeah, yeah. No, no, you put music to it and everything. Yeah, I yeah. tried to make like a highlight reel of it. Uh, you know. Did you put in the part where you, you threw up? That was way later. So it was like, <laughs> you know, like the camera at that point, you would have had to go through like us just <laughs> chit-chatting for, you know. You like, almost, I was up there for an hour and like 10 minutes Yeah, or you something. almost made it, right? And then they couldn't, they Dude, couldn't land, so they were just circling. And they, yeah, <laughs> at that point, my body just had was like, no, no more. You know, I can't handle any like little sudden movement. At well, that the thing that I thought there's the look right yeah, there. Look that, the plane, <laughs> how did they the fit? I don't know how you caught that. That was such the perfect. That embodies like what I felt like. How did they fit your cakes in that uh, yeah. in that suit? <laughs> oh, you should have seen me trying to because when you put these straps over your legs, you have to squat down and then like it's really hard to pull them up because it's so tight because they want it like yeah, it's almost to be. yeah like almost like you're cutting your leg off tight. Well, That's you hilarious. know what the th one of the things that I thought was so memorable at that uh, being the outsider looking in and being jealous that I didn't get to go do that uh, was I didn't realize how special that was. Like there's people that spend their oh, life. Oh, the people that service the planes don't even get to go. Well, that's what I mean. That they spend their life in the Air Force. Yes. And they never get a chance to fly in one of those. And uh, so the honor uh, for you to get to even do that, I mean, most people will go their whole life, even being connected to the Air Force and never get to do no, that. No, you're absolutely right. I actually went uh, the next day because they're still doing this air show and I just wanted to go back there and watch them, you know, do their thing in real action because I have such a new respect for it to begin with. But then I was talking to like old vets and we were in this like B-52 bomber plane and we're just chatting and then Courtney's like, hey, he, you know, he just went up in an F-16 and, and the guy just looks at me like tell me tell me all about it like no he was way. like fascinated by it and i'm like you were like in the wars yeah <laughs> <laughs> this has yeah. nothing compared to that you right know? and this is air force right yeah it was air, air force. force yeah man yeah that video. so that's freaking i think that's awesome so yeah that was a powerful thing that i got to experience so i was pretty excited about now that. we're you know you saying that so now you're starting to spark some things that uh, you know like i'm trying to think that this will be good too, to try and think of each of us individually that went off and did something like you know, I recently uh, went down uh, to meet with Organifi and their team and see their new their new location, and um, that was a really uh, neat experience uh, for me going in there. And we hadn't we hadn't been by Organifi, and I think two years. Mm -hmm. I think it had been, um, and even then was a big deal. Back two years ago, we went by there and like, you know, saw their operation and their team, and there was quite a few people that listen to the show. So we're, oh, wow, that's really cool. You know, we thought it was a really cool, and it was a cool experience. But this last one, um, it felt way different. I mean, there, there was people that worked there that got jobs with Organifi because they listened to the show. They heard the commercials. They reached out to Organifi. They got mm. the, 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 the entire place uh, were not only just fans, but they were, I mean, it, when I walked in the door, like everybody kind of surrounded me and wanted to hear, t tell stories about Mind Pump. That's great. Yeah, it just was a really, really cool, humbling, uh, amazing experience. And it, it because it's been, it, there was a two year gap between the last time that I went around that team. You could, I could feel the the, mm -hmm, the difference, mm -hmm. and so it was just confirmation of how how much impact that the show has made and how much it's grown over the last couple of years and. So that was a really cool yeah. uh, experience for me. Yeah, last year I had the opportunity to do a lot of sales trainings for trainers mm -hmm. in the in the fitness space, and that was really cool because it brought me to my my fitness roots. You know, working with and training trainers and being able to make a positive impact, and uh, you know, getting in front of people, getting in front of them, teaching them the the communication process, and showing them that we value the hell out of what they're doing. Um, it felt really good to do that. It was great to get in that space again, get in the gyms and see these people. And it gave me that itch, you know what I mean? That itch to get into the gyms and, and you know, train people again or whatever. It was really fun. A lot oh, yeah. of fun. What about, I mean, can you talk about uh, being reached out to about uh, writing a book? I mean, is that, that's Yeah, I don't think we've talked about that. That's yeah. um, something that's happening. That's a big deal. Yeah. yeah, I don't know if we can necessarily talk too, too much in detail, but um, yeah, getting, getting having a publisher reach out and to, to get into the process of talking about writing a book uh, to represent this uh, amazing company uh, that could that could be a, a huge uh, opportunity for exposure and just a new chapter you know no pun intended right it's a totally new different thing it's something that we haven't done um, as part of mind pump we've used other forms of media 
we'll see what happens. You know, that's always been something in the back of my mind, like something that I've wanted to do. So yeah, that's going to be pretty exciting. Haven't started it yet though. So <laughs> yeah. well, I'm sure when I do my year review next year, I'll be able to talk about oh, yeah, what course. an experience that was all no, about. So. Of course. But anyway, the guests were phenomenal. Oh yeah. That's what I was, yeah, the, when I look at the year of guests and uh, we did almost 50. Yeah, we did almost 50. I want to nail down to the top 10 and we have to agree first on the criteria, like what, mm. and, and some of the things I'm thinking of, and you guys can add or take away from it. Uh, you know, obviously, uh, to me, I, I one that was enjoyable, entertaining. Like it's got to be entertaining for me mm-hmm. uh, to list it in the top. Can you? Two. Can you? Do you, could we say most impactful to us that could be up in the entertaining part? Well, yeah, that's uh, well. I I think impact would be another category in itself, right? I think entertainment yeah. is one thing, and Fun. then and then impactful or like the best response our audience had. That's another right. one that should be yeah. in there. Impactful for the audience, definitely. right? Uh, and then I also think that we should uh, try and recall and remember the ones that we felt uh, we did the best as far as. Our yeah. skills, uh, yeah, our, our skill set, the way the the conversation went. If we got things out of that guest that mm-hmm. maybe somebody else didn't, like I think that's that should, uh, yeah, maybe like best new information uh, presented as well, because I could think of a few examples of that. As yeah, well. where they really again impacted us. Yeah, um, where I felt like my mind was blown. Um, and what's funny is that the ones that I'm thinking all tend to fall in this category. Like the ones that were most impactful for me also tend to be the most fun. And also tended to have a great audience response, uh, response, and as a result, it was also one of our better. Interviews. So throw a name out there. Throw one right out there. Comes- for me, an easy number one is Bishop Barron. Number one, uh, yeah. for me. Yeah. Um, and 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 th- that maybe part of that. Now, there's a few different reasons why. Number one, when this was the second time we interviewed Bishop Barron, and I remember the first time we did it, there was a bit of uh, there was a discussion as to whether or not we should even have a. Catholic bishop on our show. We're a fitness show. And I remember the discussion was, Mm -hmm. you know, hey, we're a health show. Spiritual practice is a part of health. Um, This could be very beneficial to to our listeners. I personally was kind of on this spiritual journey. I had a lot of questions myself, and I thought interviewing someone uh, as highly ranked uh, as Bishop Barron in one of the most practiced religions in the world would be valuable. I think there'd be some wisdom there. He's also an exceptional speaker, so we thought, okay, let's let's do this. But it was there was a bit of like fear, right? We we didn't know what the reaction would be like. Yeah. Are we going to get backlash? Like, what's the deal? Are people going to get mad that it's not a fitness episode? That it's you know religion or whatever? Um, and the reality is, Bishop Barron, uh, especially the second interview, gave us one of the largest yes. uh, download boosts that we'd ever seen. We 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 saw a huge audience come over to listen to our podcast who might not have ever heard of our podcast. We also had, I saw a huge response from our audience and in, in not from Christians who people you would expect to, to say that was great from people who really had no interest in, in, in Christianity, but were very interested in self-improvement say that they took some bits of wisdom, not necessarily converting, but really they got bits of wisdom from that podcast. Yeah, that was the interesting part. Uh, and, and I think, too, just the way that he presented a lot of his ideas and, and and based them off of, like, old philosophers and authors. And, you know, he's just, like, such a well-read individual and, like, such a great uh, communicator. And I so, so I think that it was just refreshing for people to, to hear somebody else that was that intelligent be able to deliver, like, a spiritual message. So he didn't, he didn't make my top ten list. Interesting. But the only reason why he didn't is because he was on it last year mm. and because we've already interviewed. So when I made the top 10 list this year, because there's people and you know, like Max Lugavir. I agree. It would be I, harder to make the list if right, it was your second time around. Right. Yeah. So, and, and, uh, and I, but I definitely agree he should be in yours. Cause I know it's been a, a major impact uh, aside from just the great interview and your life and your journey and where you're at currently right now. So, but I mean the, the, the biggest, uh, the best compliment, um, that I had gotten up until that point uh, or, or that I'd gotten from, for, for interviewing was at that interview. Remember, after we were done... They did, which is another reason why it belongs in that top oh, 10. Oh, yeah. And we went outside, and, and one of his one of the, the guy that runs his production company comes outside. And remember, Bishop Barron had been interviewed by uh, Dave Rubin, excellent interviewer. Ben right, Shapiro, right. excellent you know uh, communicator. He'd been on mainstream media. One of his... The, the guy that runs uh, his production company comes outside and says, you guys interviewed him better than anybody else. What a huge compliment that so, was. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I like I agree, but that's why he didn't make mine because it was I I tried to narrow it down to people that this was their first time on our show, 
uh, that and and because he made last year's list, I didn't put him on this list, and it was already really hard to narrow down to ten people. And but I agree with you, and that was that was an incredible compliment. And along the lines of uh, incredible compliments, uh, that leads me to someone who made my list uh, for sure, and would be one of my top people that I would uh, present out there, and that's Mark Manson. Mark Manson yeah. Uh, and for multiple reasons, that interview, uh, I think, uh, stretched me as an interviewer, uh, the amount of homework research that I did on him that I'd already done on him because I already read multiple books of his. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I was also really excited because I know a lot of people in, uh, in the podcasting world was going to be interviewing him or has interviewed him already, some of our peers. And so there was a part of me that wanted to do a better job. Um, and be able to take him places that somewhere that nobody else had heard. So, and I thought we did a great job there. I thought we we got things out of him that nobody else did. And in fact, uh, at the end of his book tour, after he had done 150 interviews, he mentioned us as one of the his, he, his top five. You know, he said he did 150 interviews and you know listed our interview with him as one. Of the, so that felt really good uh, to get that confirmation after the amount of. Uh, work and effort I felt that we put into that interview. So that would make, for yeah, sure I got some ten. comp. I got some comments from people who had heard him on other podcasts and said that they liked him on ours. Uh, the best. I also learned from his podcast. He's mm. a very wise individual. There's a reason why his book was one of the top selling books ever. Uh, definitely in the last five to 10 years. Um, and it was because it's filled with wisdom that's echoed in stoic principles. It's echoed in religious practices and in, in, in cultures. Um, and he's got, I think he, he communicates a message um, that a lot of people need to hear. And it resonated with a lot of people. That's why he sold yeah. so many books. And he was fun. Yeah. He was f- uh, super fun. He got up and, and played. Oh, he's so uh, relatable. He played yeah. Justin's guitar. Yeah. He was that was my out. favorite part. Yeah. Because it, I mean, he came in wearing a, a heavy metal shirt. I don't know if it was like Iron Maiden or something like that. But <laughs> I was just like, oh, you like metal too. And it turns out he plays guitar. It turns out like he's super, you know, easy to talk to. And like he just started jamming on the guitar with me. It's yeah. pretty Biggest cool. thing I took away from his podcast from his interview was when he said that after his book hit a, a milestone yeah, in sales yeah, yeah. he got depressed mm. and it wasn't it, he got depressed because he had been driving so hard to accomplish that to achieve that yeah, his whole life once he hit it yeah. he was he was left without that drive or that, that sense of purpose and he went through a, a period of depression after achieving the best success you could ever imagine which what a great lesson to hear from someone, right? Take that yeah. and learn that. Because yeah, he's you know, and I there. I think there's going to be a common theme with the people that uh, we all individually pick, right? Or yeah. uh, is the people that are great storytellers are, always make for good podcast yeah, yeah. guests? And he's such he was such a great storyteller. Uh, like you said, he has he's got a lot of wisdom with what he writes. I think we connected really well with him. So for me, that's the the first name that I'm going to throw into the hat is like it's got to be in the top ten for me because it, it was yeah. an all around win. Yeah, for me, uh, and you guys picked some really good ones. I I I totally love both those interviews. I also liked, you know, it, this one's hard for me because, you know, to follow those up, I could make a lot of reasons for, you know, some other candidates. But for me, John Brinkus, because it was this year, uh, I was like, was that last year or this year? I guess it was this year, but it was a surprise guest. It was somebody that kind of came through our area, hit us up, and we're like, wait, who's that? Oh yeah. It's the guy that was part of the show, that sports science show. I love that show. And he came in, he's so polished. He's, he's just a great, he made my top 10 also. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He just, and, and also like we, we had just barely any time to kind of like scramble to, to prep for him, uh, you know, coming in, but we were, we watched one of his Ted talks and he was talking about, you know, women in sports and he had such a, a contrary idea to you know what i had thought but he presented his argument very well and so um i just thought that that i wish i had more time with him to be honest so i feel like we didn't have the best interview with him but if we had a follow-up it'd be amazing it still was good though it was good you know like i i he made my top 10 uh i say i feel like john is good no matter what the guy was so polished and so confident and clear with his with his matches which is what i took away from it for me personally, I wouldn't consider it one of the top ten. It oh, he didn't break your top ten. No, it wasn't oh, super wow. impactful for me personally. But what the part that I did take away from it was uh, how well someone can present themselves, mm-hmm. and that's John. I feel like you put John anywhere, you put him on stage, you put him on radio, whenever. Yeah. Turn on the lights, and the guy's going to just present himself 
exceptionally well. And what I learned from that is because we have no training in media. None of us do what we're all just practicing podcasting. Even today, mm-hmm. watching him, it helps elevate my game. Like, oh, okay, like look at this guy presents himself. Oh, Very uh, comfortable. see, I th- the part that Justin's mm-hmm. talking about, the the way he talked about uh, the difference between women and men in sports was so interesting to mm-hmm. me. And it's probably because it was sports ball. Yeah, no, <laughs> it makes sense why it's in our top ten and not yeah, yours. Right. But I, he is like a first. Like, there's like a couple people we're gonna get to. It's probably as we get further down the list that you, I could easily, you could sway me into pushing him out and pushing somebody else sure. in. But he's like, he has to be in my top ten. That's how strong I felt about it because it was. I catch myself every once in a while uh, with an interview where I'm like intently listening. Like, oh, was that one of them? Yeah. yeah. Where yeah I wanted just, to know everything you're saying. Yes. I just want to, like, I could have just sat there and been okay not saying anything and just listening to this guy keep sharing what he's talking about and been enthralled by the entire conversation. And so when, I, when I, I'm uh, very aware when I have moments like that, like, oh, wow, that was a good, fun mm-hmm, interview. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was one of those. I, I think it's a must listen for even somebody who's not into sports. I think the conversation was really enjoyable. He's polished, like Sal says. Uh, he absolutely goes in my top yeah. 10. So who would be? I got another one for you. Um, and this one, because uh, we, every once in a while, we'll meet a guest and we, it's like that, sh- what's that show, uh, Step Brothers, where they're like, do we just become best friends? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> every once in a while, we'll meet someone. Mike Matthews is like this. Max Lugavere yeah, is like Max this. Is where like that. Right away, you meet them and you're like, we're, we're friends right away. And this person I'm about to name was just like this. And oh, the I reason know, why this is. was so impactful was because this is a person that we all followed and listened to for years before mm-hmm. Mind Pump was even an idea. Um, I'm talking about Joe DeFranco. Joe DeFranco was somebody that all of us looked up to, listened to. I consider him, we all consider him one of the best yes. trainers ever in the world. Um, he's exceptional, but he's also a real dude. He's down to earth. And the part that blew me away was, was he, when he showed up, he was a fan of ours. Mm. And that's when I, that's when I, the first time I felt like, wow, I think we're starting to reach a lot of people when Joe DeFranco is saying he loves our podcast. He's in my top 10 also. Yeah, yeah me yeah. too. Yeah, it was. It, it's just like you said. It was like, dude, do we just become best friends? Because it's like us represented on the East Coast. You know, it's <laughs> like, uh, where have you been, man? Like, yeah, yeah I, I've been a big fan of his ever since I, I found him in college. And it's just, it's, it's surreal actually to you know, be connected to him now, you know, uh, you know, as an adult. So it's, I'm, I'm stoked that we got to have him on the show. And then we had him again because, you know, he's just that awesome. He's a funny dude down to earth, super smart, but he, he's one of those people who's, this is what makes him so exceptional is he's, he knows what the hell he's talking about. He's incredibly intelligent and well-versed and knowledgeable, but he presents it in an easy to understand, digestible oh, he has a way. A ton of wisdom, which makes him he's full effective, of, full of wisdom, super yeah, effective. Yeah. He's not just a smart guy; he's, he's full of wisdom. No, he he definitely uh, made my list uh, also, and for those reasons, like and the reason why Max, uh, Ben, uh, you know, uh, Jordan, you know, we Matthews. have some, we, yeah, we have Matthews, we have some regulars that were on again this year that won't be in my top ten, and it's not because. Uh, they just because they made it before, and then we've already now become. It's not fair to keep putting them up there. Yeah, yeah, right. They're they're <laughs> yeah. they're they're, be, they're good friends of ours now. They'll yeah. they'll they'll probably be lifelong friends of ours. Uh, we have the utmost respect for them as not just as podcasters or business entrepreneurs, but as people, human beings. It, Joe DeFranco falls in that category now. This was the year that we made that connection and bond. Uh, so for sure, because of that, and because I think it it will become or it already is. A, a relationship like the other uh, people that I was just uh, listing off, he he makes this year's top ten for that reason. It, for, may, for sure. it may not be the most like for somebody like oh my god that was the craziest great interview. Well, for us, uh, the impact and the the importance of him as an individual just for that reason alone, uh, I think he makes totally. uh, my my top ten. Now I have another one that I want to name. I don't know if he's going to be on yours. So you I, get to, you get to go out of order. Oh, you want to go in order? Oh yeah, <laughs> was Adam and then me. I'm like picking what he's going. Oh, go about. for it. Go for it. Come I'll on, save guy. mine. I'll you, save you, mine. You used your you used yours yeah. up right there. And yeah, you we, can't double dip. Yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah. So don't you uh <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You know, don't play sports. He doesn't have rules he plays by over yeah. here. All right, you gotta pass the ball. I yeah. Mean, rules. So uh we all agreed on that one. Um another one that I, I think we might all agree on, um that is definitely in, in my top ten list. And the the main reason why, and and if it, it I think damn well should be in all of our lists because we we talk about this on the show a lot. 
um, that we are comfortable with our paradigm being shattered. Mm -hmm. And we are, are very quick to say that we don't have all the answers. And when we're wrong, we admit it. And, you know, I, on this show, I have referred and to uh, the book Irresistible and iGin and Unplugged a, probably a thousand times and been teased about it. And to the point where I it, I could probably be uh, borderline fear mongling our audience. Mongering. mongering. I like yeah. mongling. <laughs> mongering. Yeah, yeah. Fear mong you, mongering. You, you fear someone so much to become Mongol. <laughs> a bunch of Mongols <laughs> out there. Yeah. <laughs> I could be so bad that uh, because it, it, I think it impacted th those books impacted me so much mm -hmm. um, that it really did scare me. Like, oh my god, I got to be really careful about my kid in tech, and what do I do? Uh, and then when we have we have near IL on the show, mm -hmm. and completely, uh, completely blew all our minds, right? And hundred percent, and because he was the complete counter to that message, um, to the point where. And I wouldn't say it completely relaxed me on the other side because I still I still think that Adam Atler's Irresistible is a is a must read and a very important book. It's just now provided me a nice nice balance of the complete opposing argument mm -hmm. and and what supports that side really really well. And now feeling really confident in hearing both of them and and agreeing with both of them, I find that I have a really nice understanding and balance of how I want to approach raising my son and the tech in my family. Mm -hmm. So that episode, and not to mention another one of those really enthralling conversations. Oh, yeah. He, he yeah. dispelled a lot of myths. Um, you know, I, I mentioned how kids are more depressed and he said, actually, uh, they're not. And we mentioned uh, the problem with tech and he said, actually, and he presented to research and he explained himself very well. He made a very compelling case. And basically the case is, Yes, you should develop practices around technology, but technology is not causing the problem. It's a symptom of some of the problems, and it was pretty. Uh, it was. It was. I must have said you're blowing my mind I to know. him. I think five times during <laughs> the like, episode. Calm down. There's more. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I learned not to say hijacking around him. That yeah. uh, triggered him. A did bit. now? It, did he make your guys' top ten? Yeah, he, he was. did. He, he did. Was. And and to be fair, right now I, I was going to take one, but I know Sal would probably rather talk about the one I was probably going to mention, which is probably above this. But uh, you know, in terms of like where Adam went with that, I think that this was like the start who actually introduced us to near al uh which is mark weinstein mm -hmm. and 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 the reason why i pick him and i don't know if he's in your guys top 10 or not but i just found that a very entertaining uh podcast which is outside of what we normally talk about it was literally the timing of it actually worked out to where it was relevant for once you know mm -hmm. like so the the fire festival if you guys are familiar with you know the netflix uh documentary about that it was it's very pop culture uh which is not something we cover like very often but it was just it was fun to get an insider look at like everything else that they probably didn't even bring up in the documentary and i feel like a lot of people enjoyed that episode as well oh yeah you got to hear what actually happened at the fire festival from a guy who was there um, and his video interview, because we that was one of the first ones that we recorded uh, and put up on YouTube, it flew. Yeah. He, it was, it was uh, and people were commenting who'd never heard of Mind Pump. They were just commenting about the whole thing. Fire Festival documentaries already exploded. Um, it was a great conversation. Mark was very open. Uh, he was very forthcoming. Mm -hmm. He was easy to interview, great conversationalist. Didn't make my top 10, but definitely was one of the, was definitely a good interview. I really, really enjoyed it. I'm with one. you. He didn't make my top 10, uh, but I, I could make the case for it too. And so sure. I understand why he he's up there for Justin. And that one was actually, uh, uh, I was really proud of that one. That was something that I I, I actually caught that, uh, that documentary. I saw him talking on the show. I then started to follow him reached out to him and then got him to come on the show mm -hmm. and thought this would be a really cool challenge mm -hmm. for us to Justin's point. Like it was, you know, during that time when we were really starting to move out of just fitness guests all the time, like mm -hmm. last year was like all fitness guests for 90% mm -hmm. yeah. of our interviews where we were really pushing this year to kind of stretch our boundaries and go outside that. This was an area where I thought would kind of challenge all of us. It was a different type of guest. It was during that when it was all hot and popping, so I was really mm -hmm. curious to what, and it was interesting. And Mark was a really good storyteller, and did and so. It was it, it's it's up there. It's a fucking it was a great one. It it didn't make my top ten only because it's 
it was it's hard to make the top ten with yeah. all the great people. Yeah, yeah. Right. And now, it w- is it my turn now? Yeah, go. Ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Let me have the ball. Um, this next person I picked because of the pure quality, brilliant information that they provided on the podcast. And I got a lot of messages from people who said it was one of the best podcasts they'd heard on the subject of the microbiome mm-hmm. and how probiotics affect the body. Um, this was uh, Raja Deer. Um, he was young dude, comes in, brilliant. And he breaks down how the microbiome works. He breaks down how probiotics work in the body. He communicated it very well. It's a bit of a high level podcast. I was just to say, that was I, my top informative podcast. It was. It, yeah, it was it made my list. For I got sure. lots of messages from people who were like, "This was the best episode on that topic that I've ever heard." And again, it's a higher level. Yeah, yeah episode. it episode. Did, it didn't make my top ten because I don't think it. I think the majority of people it was almost too heavy. But I agree with both of you that talk about it for me. You know, I was another one of those guests where I'm just like hanging on every word he said. And Mm -hmm. like, it was all new information for me. I think that's why I got so sucked in. No, it was, it was brilliant, but, uh, it it didn't make the top 10 for that, for that, that reason. I just feel like it was too high a level for, for, Oh, I loved it, man. I was, and I, and I learned, uh, you know, microbiome is something that I'm always very fascinated about. Um, and it was, you know, I got to sit down with someone, actually learn things, he was communicating things I had not learned. No, he was, it was uh, before, awesome. uh, like how micro, how uh, you know probiotics actually work in the body. How uh, there's they're they're how they're studying different parts of the human body and how they have their own unique you know microbiome fingerprint. Um, if you're interested in gut health or mental health and the effects of the microbiome, that is an episode for sure you need to listen to. But again, it's high level, so you might need to listen to it more than once. So I have I have some obvious ones that I feel like should come in the list, but I'm I'm gonna pick one of the one of the other ones on my list that I don't know if what made your guys' list. And uh, again, I'm staying with this theme of you know, kind of paradigm shattering uh, interviews for me or people that are counter what our message is. Like, I really like that. Uh, and especially if we did a good job of interviewing. Um, and that is Sanjay Rawl. Right, Rawal? Oh, he's on mine. Yeah. Is he on yours? He's on mine. Yeah. I, 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 loved, I loved this guy. There's a, there's a few people that we've met. You know, we talked about people that we meet and that we click and we're like, oh, we're just friends. Then there's like a couple people that I've met who I genuinely think that they are among the best people in the world. Just pure, good people. He was one of them. Like it was, yeah. he's, he's a long distance runner. That's hardcore. why That's why I picked it because yeah. it's, it's so counter our message, right? We're so the anti run marathon type guys. And to listen to him share his story, his kind of message and presenting that, it really, again, gave, gave me the other end of the spectrum. I know I've, I've already got my own, uh, information on the support, my my thoughts and beliefs on marathon running and just running in general for your 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 dominant way of exercise. To hear him from the complete opposite share mm-hmm. uh, his beliefs and his his thoughts and and ideology around uh, marathon running really was. Uh, oh, he sold me so hard on the meditative, uh, transformative, spiritually transformative potential effects of grueling long distance running. I mean, the way he talked about it and explained it and how it became a part of his spiritual practice and how it was part of a spiritual practice that he, a group he belonged to, you listen to him talking like that makes perfect sense. And I can definitely see the, I can definitely understand the transformative effects that this has had on you. Um, and he was, the reason why he was on my top 10, Adam, is because uh, he was uh, completely unexpected. I did not. Expect- oh yeah, that was another one of those guests where we almost didn't do it. Yeah, yeah, I didn't expect it to be that exceptional and phenomenal of an episode. And yet, oh, yeah, I, when he left, I felt like uplifted. Yeah, from talking to him. Definitely an episode you need to listen to for sure. No, that one was awesome. I, I guess I'll talk about Doctor uh, Arthur Brooks. Oh uh, yeah, uh, because it, again, as far as us like debating whether or not to really make that happen this year, like we're like eventually, you know, maybe we'll be able to catch him on a time where it's, you know, more convenient. Like we had just watched his amazing, the pursuit, uh, his documentary on Netflix. And I just thought he, and I am not, I'm not big on politics. In fact, like Sal just hanging out with you enough has, has gotten me to, uh, you know, dive in a little bit more and get, you know, more, uh, 
like interest in that direction at all. Like, I, it used to be repulsive to me mm -hmm. to even like talk about it with people uh, because it's so polarizing. And mm -hmm. I just thought that, you know, this that documentary that he created was just so well done and, and brought brought it back down to to you know the roots of you know what we all need to be you know focused on and 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 how we can better society uh you know by doing you know these simple things and and i thought that uh, you know meeting him in person again my mind was blown that he first of all knew who we were was connected to bishop baron and then we go down there and then he he listens to our show like that just it was crazy that was like i was super ready to fangirl over him and then he was doing it back to us i'm like this is weird like this is so crazy that someone that i became a massive fan over because I, I watched this documentary then i started reading everything that he wrote and i'm like this guy is uh incredible and then we meet him and he's like oh i've been listening to you guys for two years I was like, holy shit. His talk at that event uh, had all of us in tears. All of us got emotional yeah. Yeah. listening to what uh, he was saying. And it because of that, it powerful. It, it's obvious we did not order these in from one to 10, one being the best, because I think this one we probably would agree would be our number one guest of the year for all those reasons. Yeah. I thought we did a good job interviewing. I thought the whole- uh, It was we totally almost, surprising. Yeah, we almost didn't go, yeah. so it surprised the shit out of us, the experience Great with him. Great fan response. Yeah, I, I, I think that he would for sure be up there. One thing that he said in his talk that blew me that just blew me I don't care if you're spiritual religious or, or or not it was just such an impactful thing is he talked about the value of fathers in particular uh, having a spiritual practice for their children so he's making the case for it and he says you know when you're a child the biggest strongest you know toughest person in the world is your dad and for a lot of us that's very true it was for me as a kid i know now i know objectively my dad is not the biggest toughest strongest dude in the world but when i was a kid he was mm -hmm. i i 100 percent. and to my kids i am i know when my kids were i remember when my son was five years old he asked me genuinely asked me if i could pick up the house he literally thought he's like can you lift up the house <laughs> you know because when you're that age and you see your dad he is the strongest person in the world oh, and then it. To see your father bend his knee and bow to someone else, to a God, to a spiritual practice, what a powerful message you're sending because you are the most powerful person. Now what are you sending th that message to your child is, hey, even the strongest, most powerful person in the world bows down to this this belief that we have, regardless of what your religion was. It gives me chills talking about it. When he said that, I think all of us were. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I, I looked to the right and left, and I said, oh, we're all fighting tears right now. Yeah. <laughs> what a powerful, powerful message. The other thing he said uh, in his talk was that the opposite of love is fear, and that, for me, struck really home uh, because I was left with so much fear from my divorce, carrying it into my, into my, into my current relationship. And for some reason, I always thought the opposite of love was just hate and anger. Hate and anger. Hate and is no, it's fear. It makes perfect sense. You can't love 100% if you're fearful. And so you need to, and to love fully is to be completely vulnerable. What a powerful message. Oh, what are the about, best speakers when of all time? When you talk about moral courage and, yes. and standing up for the people that you, that you disagree with and yes. the importance of that. I mean, he had so many uh, quotes or stories he told, or I think that just, I think it hit everybody. So he's, he's got to be in everybody's top 10. Now, for the last one, since we're at ten right now, and it would be your turn. No, it wouldn't be fair for you to make your your tenth because you got to go. The, so this last one, <laughs> I think we should all make a case for somebody different, and then we should agree on that last person, right? So I'm oh. sure we all have somebody on the list that is different from each other. So the first name I'm going to throw in the hat, then each of us can, and then we can we can decide and agree on one. Mm. I feel like Ryan Holiday has to make uh, my list there mm. uh, again. Uh, and I know that uh, it may not pass by you guys because it might be too closely related to like a Mark Manson as far mm -hmm. as what that interview was like because uh, very similar. They both pull from stoicism. Uh, they both are popular authors uh, right now, young guys. Uh, even though their their message is is not the same, in some areas it's similar. They're friends themselves. But again, uh, just a fun all-around interview for me. I felt like we did some of our best work uh, with him. I thought we asked some really cool questions. I think we got to take him. He's another guest that's been on a lot of these other podcasts mm -hmm. uh, that are that we know and that are friends of ours. And you know, I took a lot of personal pride in trying to 
get him places that nobody else had. I thought we did a good job there, and then also really liked him. So I, that was that. That would be a. a person yeah, I like to make- that one. I enjoyed that that conversation with him for sure, and I. I appreciate, you know, all the books he's put out and what he's doing, uh, impacting people, you know, with his message. Uh, but I, I would probably vote for Tommy Caldwell. Oh, okay. Uh, mainly because, it, I mean, his story in general is just so crazy. So like, he's on my list too. Yeah. Like, so, like it was such. A, I mean, like you, you get to see it in his documentary, and if you read up on him, and he's been on multiple interviews, but. I felt like we were able to get a lot more details of like his capture and, Mm -hmm. you know, he really like, like got intense when he was like um, reliving that and like telling that experience to us. And I just got like sucked in and it was just a very engaging and entertaining uh, ride that we had with him. Yeah. Those are both, uh, I, I think those are both really good. I have a third person that's different and this person has been on our podcast more than once. So I know that doesn't fit your Uh, criteria, Adam, but the reason why I'm picking this person is because this each time we had this person on the first and second time, we've had such a massive response from our audience, in particular our female audience, um, and I feel mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. Uh, that they often we you know we need to talk to them a little bit more about some of the stuff that we're not necessarily experts in uh, that affect them, things like their hormones and birth control. And Jolene, and this is yeah. Doctor Jolene Brighton. Doctor Jolene like Brighton, pick. she's she's exceptional at what she does. She communicates things the right way. And when we have her on the show, the the outpouring of support we get from our female audience, like, thank you so much for having her on. Oh, my God, I love her so much. Thank you so much for you three dudes to address an issue that has nothing to do with you guys but has everything to do with just women. Thank you for doing that. And I don't know if the first time we had on the show, was that last year? Was that 2018? Or were they both this year? I think they are both here this year. Oh, good. So she qualifies then. Oh, really? Yeah, I so thought she was last year. No. That's actually why she didn't make my top 10, because I did that. I kind of went like, oh, okay, that's somebody who probably made yeah, last yeah. year. I think Doug might be right. I think she was both times this year. Uh, Dr. Jolene Brighton, for sure, if that's the case. Yeah, then that's in my the case. case I, I, yeah, I would kind of lean in that direction as well. It was very, again, this is information that I think everybody benefited from, you know, men included, and, and it was just a good insight. Uh, and her, it, it's just so much research has been involved, you know, with her. And I just, I, I appreciated like every part of that conversation. Yeah, this, her, her, if you want to learn about the effects and from a doctor, right? So, the effects uh, of birth control on the body. And she communicates off, well. She communicates really well. Very too. well. She's extremely likable. She's going to be, uh, uh, you know, we talk, We told her, hey, we want you on the show relatively regularly because we liked her so much. So yeah. um, I think she should definitely be. Uh, I, I, I can concede to that being yeah. our 10th one because I'll, I, I'll go with that. I, I actually did think that we had her up there last year already. And if we didn't, that, that alone makes her a top 10 for sure because she is. Totally. She's a, she's one of those guests that, um, especially if I'm talking to a, a female, I say you have to listen to this episode. There's just mm-hmm. there's so much valuable content mm-hmm. uh, for for a woman that you have to listen to it. And I think, like you said too, that lots of men can benefit from it too. But it's like a must listen if you're if you're a woman and you haven't listened to that episode of ours. Oh, I consider it one of our core episodes to listen. Yeah, to. and her her social media and the way she communicates to her audience so valuable. I mean, her mm-hmm. Instagram is so, Instagram is a hard platform to make really valuable, and she does a really really good job doing it. Uh, do you guys think we should name some of our least favorite, or do you think we should leave this out? <laughs> you know, know. I, I was glancing. At, I was bus. I was glancing at the list, and there, uh, there's God. This year was, you know, there was a year where I felt like we had qu- uh, quite a few that were kind of like weren't weren't type yeah. episodes. Yeah. Yeah. But even when I look at some of my least favorite, uh, I I wouldn't say that they were they're bad or like yeah. I didn't like them or. You know, they just, they just, it's hard to make the top 10 or the ones that were just super amazing. Um, Probably one of the least impactful for me uh, and uh, letdowns uh, was uh, William Hyde. Uh, And that was, uh, I think I'm going to blame that on Sal. I think that was one (laughs) that he thought it would be great to have somebody who was a uh, expert in, what did we think he was an expert? What, in? Was that a, was that our cannabinoid? That was our so cannabinoid. here's the problem. Here's he was a scientist. Now here's the reason yeah. why that was a problem. I had contacted. Uh, <laughs> Let's do it back. I had con- no, no. Hey, hey. <laughs> Listen, I I had contacted. Uh, I think it was Leafly to have them send us a, an ex- right. a scientist on cannabinoids. They didn't send us a scientist. They send us the podcast host, yeah, a bud tender. Yeah, and when he started talking <laughs> cannabinoids, uh, you know, Adam and I were both sitting there going. 
we kind of you know, like we we've communicated what you're saying right now. You're not you're not telling us anything new, right? Um, wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. No, but it wasn't. It wasn't. Great. No, but if you're gonna if we're gonna try and categorize a handful of what uh, I think are worst, that one would be mine. That I thought was just kind of yeah. want one. I got, I got one for you, and this was just it was a rough it was just a rough interview. It just seemed so formulaic. It was so hard to pull this person out. Mm. Um, Steffi Cohen. Yeah. Um, I you know n- not a bad person. Uh, but she came with the pages of notes, right. and it was so hard to pull her out of that. Well, that was the one. Well, that was the one that I you wasn't, weren't there. I right? wasn't there. So that's a factor. But uh, you know, on top of that, too, like I think there was just so many walls. There's way too many walls coming in. Like there was, well, we can't talk about this subject. We can't talk about PEDs. We can't talk about transgenders. You know, in athletes. And I'm like. Well, those are the interesting things. Yeah. Like, what are we left with here? Yeah, yeah that was, it a was first, tough. So I, I wasn't there, and you guys told me that. This, so this is the first person that I ever remember that's ever told us we can't talk about something, yeah. right? Yeah. 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 Like, I don't- Yeah, the, normally everybody's, oh, whatever. You know, take me wherever you want. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we haven't mm-hmm. had too many guests that have given us rules on what we can and can't ask them. No, and right? it was, and there was at one point, uh, I almost Did you say like she had her notes, too? She, she was had using notes. The and, first time I've seen that. And I also- I haven't f- seen it. But, I think she might have been nervous, honestly. I think she might have been nervous. Yeah, that might have been the case. And- but at one point, I think she even took something that I said uh, to offense. I felt like she got offended, which I wasn't saying anything offensive at all. Yeah. I don't remember what I said. Uh, I can't remember exactly what it was, but I asked her a question, and she was almost like, "How dare you know?" She had this look on her face, like, oh, "I think you might have taken me the wrong way." Yeah. But it wasn't. It was, and and that one let me down because I was really looking forward. Uh, to interviewing uh, her because she's such an exceptional. Oh, she's athlete. revered by so many people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that one definitely makes the the top, the bottom, top of the bottom list. For me. <laughs> top of the bottom. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Yeah. Uh, uh, let's see. I, I mean, Brandon Harris for me. It's just it was ridiculous. Oh, I forgot about yeah, that. Like that. I mean, I, that belongs. Poor there, guy. So. I felt kind of like a bully. Bring him in here. You know, it's like. Oh, the the idea was like, let's see if, you know, we can challenge you well, know, a guest a bit. Do you remember what okay, so I remember what happened here and that and I think the reason why it has to go on this list and why this was a good good for us though. I'm glad we did it because th- there was a point where we thought, okay, you know, maybe we should bring guests uh, on things that we think is absolute bullshit, and let's fucking hammer them on the show. Right. Let's bring them on the show. That'll make for great entertainment. People are going to love to hear us do that. And what ended up happening with him is we actually really liked him as a person. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden- He's a genuine we, guy. Yeah, he, he is a really good guy with good intentions and uh, just happened and is making a lot of money off some gimmicky bullshit fucking item. Right. Uh, but, you know, I think he comes from a, a good place. His intentions were pure. I think that's, we all read into that and it was like, then it- Plus we're not, we're, we're not like, bullies. Uh, we're like, yeah, yeah, this doesn't feel as good. I mean, it was it was fun to kind of joke around about it and like how silly the product was and whatnot. But, but a like, worthless episode. Yeah, but it was worthless. <laughs> worthless episode. It, it totally was. Yeah, one hundred percent. You could skip that episode and be okay. Yeah, and yeah, I would yeah, never I recommend. Know, like, that I don't episode. know why we did it. Yeah. That, I forgot all about that episode. Yeah, yeah. That but was, you're right. Though it was good for us to, to test that out. And yeah, be we, like, yeah, we should never do that because we were. Remember, we were going yeah. back and forth for a while. Like, you know, this is what we need to yeah, do. We got to get more controversial. And we yeah. were, I, I remember he wasn't the only person. I was reaching out to some other people that I knew were kind of promoting a, a bad message or bullshit. And the intention was we're going to bring them on there and fucking hammer them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They're going to come on because it's exposure for them. So it's going to yeah. be a no brainer for them to come on. And then we we're going to get on there and be, be hard. But what we realized was. It was like we were trying to be a dick, yeah, and we didn't want to we're be. We're not it bullies. It didn't no. feel that. Na- it didn't feel right because we liked him as a person. And not only that, but you're on our home turf. We're going to bring you on. We're going to hammer you. It's like we're not bullies. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, no. I'm sure that works well for other media companies. You know, there's other people who make a living, like Hardball. After or yeah, like doing that. all that. Yeah, but like- uh, but no, it's not. Especially somebody nice who's not going to defend themselves in a way that's going to make us you know invoke us to get that that type of. That's how you know, I felt. I felt yeah. like this guy is yeah. not going to like throw a punch back. So this is not going to be yeah. fun to sit here and you beat know, there, up on. There, there's a pod, another podcast that we did interview that sh- that surprised me because i didn't think it would be that great i really didn't uh was uh doug bobst uh i i didn't i didn't think Uh, it was i I thought i thought it was gonna turn into another one of those brandon here yeah i thought it's not gonna this is not gonna be a good episode but he's such a nice genuine guy and the conversation was pretty good and I left with that going, oh, that was better well, than I thought. Well, what was so surprising was how well it was received. The audience, like- They did. Oh, man, they loved that episode. Well, I think, was like, wow. Think, I, the reason why I think that is, is think about all the shit that he had been through and, and, and himself, and admittedly, 
uh, called himself out. Like, talk about a very authentic. Yes, that's what that's it was. That's what it was. Yeah. Very authentic. I mean, I mean, some people on he was, here. He was totally being honest. Some people that we we like or that we enjoy episodes. A lot of t- sometimes they're just polished. Mm-hmm. Like we already mentioned that a couple times that you know some guests are are good and entertaining because they're good at what they do. They're good at talking on camera and they're good at presenting a great story. And that doesn't. That's not a knock on them. That's fucking awesome. That's what mm-hmm. makes them great. But then there's some people that you just like them because they're fucking real, yes. and they're just uh, all of themselves, all and they they present their flaws. Mm-hmm. This is who I am. Yes, I was an asshole or an idiot or I didn't know better, and and just honest. Yes, very very. Honest. And so that's what I got from his story was that uh, it, it it wasn't it definitely wouldn't make my top ten. Um, I in fact I thought it was also going to be one that was kind of like whatever. Yeah. But what a really genuine good dude with a, a pretty crazy story, mm-hmm. and uh, and I think that's why uh, that was well, nicely. Uh, another one like that, well, kind of like that. Like we had him on. Uh, Mike McCastle was one that yes. I I actually really enjoyed that conversation. I loved his definitely mentality. exceeded expectations. Yeah, he he was a real coach. You know, he he. Like he was a trainer's trainer and he was able to uh, do these feats of strength that were just, it seems impossible. And, you know, you, you've seen a lot of this on social media of people getting drawn into the hype, you know, the hype. There's a lot of these guys out there that are, you know, just hammering themselves and doing brutal things that, uh, you know, people rally because it's so impressive, but it's like, man, like you're killing yourself out mm-hmm. there. But he, the the reason why he's doing things, the way that he's training for these, the message behind what he's doing is, I just felt like it's so much better. Do you guys remember the, how that all came out? Do you remember how that, how we even got him as a guest? Why we got him as a guest? Any of this stuff? No, because uh, he was mentioned. Uh, I know that I I heard his name uh, from one of his clients that that was trying to cross Antarctica uh, by foot. Yeah, and so he trained him and mentioned him on Joe Rogan. But then I think you followed up and then... So and what made me pursue him, you introduced me, You, I started following him after you brought him up. And what made me pursue him was at the same time, uh, we have had we had uh, David Goggins' team had been reaching out to be on our show and we've had quite a few people saying, you got to get David Goggins on the show. And so I've listened to his interviews and I'm not a fan of the message. I've just, it's not, it's the, it's the motivation push through, you know, Navy SEAL type of, uh, of message, which of course I've, I've talked about before that it's just, it's not my favorite message to the fitness community. I think mm-hmm. it, it, it feeds more into. It's overrepresented in the fitness space. It, that, and that's yeah. my point, right? And that's not a knock on those guys or those stories. It's or not be, taking anything away from it. Like very impressive, but yeah, again, yes, right. over, oversaturated. Right. right. And so when people would reach out, they'd say, ask me about it. I mean, eh, I'm not a fan of his message, uh, but I yes, I'm impressed by his feats and, and got a great story, whatever, but that's not enough for me to want him on the show. When I found out that Mike Castle was the person who broke David Goggins record in pull-ups and I looked into Mike Castle and that his trainer background, the way he goes about training for these type of feats, the reason Mm -hmm. why he does these feats, the motivation behind it is a lot different than Goggins. Mm -hmm. And I liked that. And I wanted him to come on and present that message. If you want to do some crazy fucking thing, the the way that Mike presents that I think is is different, and I liked him because of that, and so that's what pursued. And then he ended up being a great guest. You did. He, he took me by surprise. Incredible, sure. smart trainer, mm-hmm. very good dude, very underrated too. I don't think he has much of a fall. He's not a a big name in the space. And it's so surprising, yeah, because I mean he's just doing the most impressive things anybody I can even think of. Yeah, yeah. Well, too busy doing it in real life. Yeah, he's you know what I'm saying? he's an action guy. Yeah, he's yeah, less yeah. of a talking guy. He's he's, he's all business. Yeah. So anyway, excellent year, guys. It's been yeah. a great year with you boys, and uh, I look forward to another phenomenal year in 2020. Uh, with that, go to mindpumpfree.com and download all of our free guides and resources. You can also find all of us on Instagram. You can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin. You can find me at Mind Pump Sal and Adam at Mind Pump Adam.